rocket ready for testing. No new sight in this day and age, but this is a rocket with a difference. This giant will blast a new route to the stars as part of a European plan to put a new satellite into space. The rocket is British. Its name is Blue Streak. It's part of a project which links seven nations together in the European Launcher Development Organization. The rocket, in its present state, is backed by the long record of experience dating from the pioneer days of flight, which has put the British aircraft industry among the world's leaders, and to experience in the space age fields of rocket propulsion, electronics, radio, and radar and micro miniaturization the logical development of Britain's pioneer work in man's mastery of the air. Nearly a decade of development work has gone into the giant, which is built largely of stainless steel, chosen because it remains strong in extremes of temperature and can be welded with reliability, even when as thin as this, only about one fiftieth of an inch thick. The electronic heart of the rocket is in the guidance bay, including the autopilot system that keeps it on course. Steering in flight is done by movements of the main motors, which also drive the rocket along with a thrust of 135 tons, say, the power of about 40,000 family cars, reaching a speed of 8,500 miles an hour. Built by Hawker Siddeley Dynamics, under the general technical control of the Royal Aircraft Establishment, Blue Streak sets off on her first journey. The space vehicle that's meant to climb 150 miles high in just under six minutes takes to the road at 17 miles an hour. She's on her way from her birthplace near London to the north of England. Here at Spade Adam is a 20 million pound test site with 10,000 acres of natural safety belt around it, where Blue Streak's engines, manufactured by Rolls-Royce, and the whole of the rocket system can be tested without her leaving the ground. That will come later on the other side of the world from Britain at Woomera in Australia. Under the rig is a vast bucket to turn Blue Streak's burning gases along the ground. This is Blue Streak's first real test, the day when the scientists and engineers who've built her will know just how close she is to Woomera and her peaceful role in space. Blue Streak is tethered. Between her and a real launch are four tough steel bolts. Now she has qualified for the full flight test at Woomera. It's the start of a month's journey to Australia the start of a long move forward towards the goal set by the European Launcher Development Organization to put Europe into space. It's a plan for a three-stage vehicle. Britain's Blue Streak is stage one. France and Germany are supplying stages two and three. Italy, the satellite itself. The Netherlands and Belgium, vital electronic and radio guidance systems. Australia contributes the big range facilities at Woomera. The journey itself has meant Weeks of planning. Police forces have had to be notified. Every yard of road has had to be checked in advance for sharp corners, low bridges and roadworks. Now London docks and the rocket starts the long sea voyage to her first flight. Begun as a weapon system, a means of delivering a nuclear warhead some 3,000 miles, Blue Streak ceased eventually to be required for this purpose. But already many saw her in a different role. And in 1961, the European Launcher Development Organization was formed to use Blue Streak as the first stage of a composite space vehicle. Three hundred miles northwest of Adelaide, just to the north of a dry salt pan called Lake Hart, is Woomera Range, where, since Blue Streak's static test in England, Work has been going on to prepare for her arrival at the special site, Launcher Area Number 6. 
Soon, this first test vehicle will be known by a number instead of a name, F1. She'll have several successors with dummy second and third stages until F7 is reached, which will carry Europe's first test satellite into space. But F1 still has to prove herself here at Woomera, Australia's outpost of science on the trail into space. Less than 20 years ago, it was no more than an isolated halt on the Trans-Australian Railway. Today, it's a busy little town in the middle of nowhere, with a population of well over 5,000, including 1,600 children and a well-equipped hospital. It's a town run by Australia's weapons research establishment, but all community amenities come under the control of the Woomera board, an elected body. For Mrs Lawrence and the other housewives of Woomera, the shops are handy and well stocked. And the town has its own churches, a hospital, a swimming pool and an active community life. Twenty-eight miles out of the town, Blue Streak is now at her launch site. For the range staff and the trials team, weeks of preparation lie ahead. Weeks of precise work at Launcher 6A and all the way down the thousand mile desert range. Perhaps the best overland rocket range in the world. Out on the scattered and remote radar stations like this at Miracata. In the instrumentation building where telltale signals from Blue Streak will be recorded showing how she's behaving in flight. And at the camera outposts, where powerful lenses and precise tracking will catch the flight on film. Everything is checked and rechecked. There's a dummy run, taking the countdown to within two seconds of blast-off. Mrs. Lawrence is more than a housewife. She has a part-time job on the range. And for her and several hundred others involved in Blue Streak's test, the weeks of preparation are almost over. Every working day, she joins other desert commuters on the trek to work. But for her, it's more than a bus ride away. Security's tight here. Blue Streak isn't the only rocket on the stocks, and many of the projects are still top secret. You don't need a bus ticket, but you must carry your pass. And now for the next leg of the daily journey. Mrs. Lawrence's post is far up north, and there can't be many women in the world who fly 300 miles to work and back every day. She takes sandwiches for lunch, and the plane will be back for her around four in the afternoon. But today is special, the day of Blue Streak's launch, and Mrs. Lawrence's camera will be one of many that will follow the flight. Here for the launch, visitors from Whitehall, from Eldo, from Canberra, who've been watching Blue Streak's progress from afar for months. Among them, General Girardin, Eldo's Director General, responsible for their initial program. He's flown from Paris. The final slow time checkout of the vehicle on the launcher is elaborate. For this first flight is the acid test of years of work. All systems have been exercised and tested. Now they're into the countdown, a procedure of checks and actions in sequence lasting about 60 hours. On the launcher and in the control room, British and Australian technicians and engineers check and activate the rocket and launcher systems. Fuel transfer and pressurization. The three telemetry transmitters which relay vital information to the ground during flight about performance and conditions in the rocket. 
beacons for radar tracking, equipment for the radio command, which will destroy the vehicle if it goes off course, the gyroscopes of the autopilot, which will steer the rocket on a course northwest across Australia for hundreds of miles, 5,000 separate actions. Now the service tower is withdrawn and it's time to transfer the liquid oxygen from ground storage to the launcher. Access to the rocket, painted with its flight marking, is restricted from now on. There's a hold period to warn the range of Blue Streak's impending fueling. An hour and a half to the launch now. Transfer of liquid oxygen is always left to the last for safety reasons, and also because of its low boiling point that causes loss of fuel due to boil off before the flight. Into Blue Streak's tanks go 60 tons of liquid oxygen to add to the 27 tons of kerosene already loaded. Now the technicians must get out to a safe distance some 4,000 feet away. In the instrumentation building 10 miles away is the digital impact computer that will constantly predict Blue Streak's point of impact from the instruments tracking her flight. If she strays off her safe course, the computer will detect it instantly. On the floor above, the trials control officer is receiving the final ready signals. Beside him for this critical occasion are the principal officer of the range and the scientist in charge from Farnborough in England. The decision is taken. The trial is on. From now on, the countdown is automatic to avoid human error through stress. Blue Streak systems are still being checked, but automatically. Should anything go wrong, the countdown would stop, again, automatically. The final 10 seconds. A 20-second vertical climb, controlled by her autopilot, then Blue Streak changes direction. Seven tenths of a degree a second, until her thrust chambers swivel her to an angle 30 degrees above the horizon. If she strays, if something goes wrong, a finger on that button would destroy her instantly. But she's on course, northwest, across hundreds of miles of Australian desert, watched on sky screens, on radar, and by dozens of cameras and hundreds of people still on a safe flight path, climbing to around 50 miles high before her fuel is done, then to a height of over 100 miles by her own momentum. For Mrs. Lawrence, it's a camera's eye preview of the day when one of Blue Streak's successors will help Europa One to boost a one-ton satellite into orbit 300 miles high, or perhaps to place an electronic reporter on the moon itself. <laughs>